This is Stone Gold Export and today we are comparing the RX 6800 from AMD to the RTX 3070 from Nvidia at two ultra wide resolutions 2560 by 1080 and 3440 by 1440. I tested the cards both at stock speeds and overclocked and you can see the description for the overclock I applied to the cards. So the test system today is the Intel i5-10600K at 4.9GHz with 4.8GHz cache clock and 16GB of DDR4 memory running in dual channel at 4266MHz with 16-16-16-34 timings. The RTX 3070 used in this test is the Gigabyte Eagle OC that I have already reviewed and the RX 6800 is the reference design which I have also already reviewed. I tested 10 games for this comparison and we kick things off with Assetto Corsa Competizioni. In my review of the 6800, I was surprised by the performance increase I saw on AMD cards, however when testing for this comparison, uh, the performance on the 3070 was up as well, and this could be due to a hotfix that was released on November 20th, but I'm not quite sure. In any case, the results at 2560 by 1080 is at stock, the 3070 is 5% ahead of the 6800, but when overclocked they both perform pretty much the same. At 3440 by 1440 we again see the 3070 having a 8% lead stock for stock, but overclocked the 6800 managed to match the 3070, uh, but the overclocked 3070 is 6% ahead. Next title is Anno 1800 and here the 3070 is 4% ahead of the 6800 at 2560 by 1080, uh, both when stock and uh, when overclock it's 4% uh, uh, faster again. Uh, not a great start for the 6800, but at 3440 by 1440, the 6800 is actually ahead uh, when stock by 2%, uh, but that actually decreases to even less than 2% when overclocked, which is basically pretty much the same. In control, the 6800 was uh, actually 15% ahead of the 3070 at stock, which I find a bit weird, seeing as how the 3070 was faster at uh, regular 1080p. But I reran the benchmark and got the same results over and over again, so there it is. Overclocked, the lead is down to 14%, uh, and at 1440p ultra wide, the 6800 is only 7% ahead, and overclocked, that is up to 9% compared to the 3070 overclocked. Again, found this a bit strange, but the result was repeatable, so there it is. Next game is Call of Duty Modern Warfare, and here the RX 6800 is 6% faster at 1080p ultra wide, stock for stock. Overclocked the 3070 matches the stock 6800 performance, but the overclocked 6800 is still 6% ahead. So there it is. Moving to 1440p ultra wide, and now the RX 6800 is 9% ahead at stock. Overclocked the 3070 is performing the same as a stock 6800, uh, but the overclocked 6800 is 8% uh, ahead. Doom Eternal is next, and at 1080p ultra wide, the 6800 is 5% ahead of the stock 3070. Once overclocked, the 3070 is able to overtake the stock 6800 as usual, and the overclocked 6800 is, of course, again faster than the overclocked 3070 by 6%. At 1440p ultra wide, the 6800 is 3% faster, stock for stock, and 7% once both are overclocked. Next game then is Forza Horizon 4, and at stock, the RX 6800 is 13% faster than the 3070. And overclocking the 3070 is not quite enough to make it match the stock 6800. Uh, and the overclocking the 6800 means it's 14% faster than the overclock 3070. Moving up to 1440p ultra wide, as uh, moving up to 1440p ultra wide at stock, the 6800 is now 7% faster than the 3070. And when they both are overclocked, that remains pretty much the same. But uh, now the 3070 is able to match the stock 6800 performance once it is overclocked. Next up is Division 2 and here the 6800 is 10% ahead of the 3070 uh, at stock speeds. When overclocked the 3070 still falls slightly short of the 6800 performance and the result is that the overclocked 6800 is 12% faster. At 1440p ultra wide the 6800 is now 8% ahead. Uh, but once the 3070 is overclocked, it's actually very close to a stock 6800 in performance. But overclocking the 6800, of course, means it's faster again, and uh, it's about 8% faster again. Uh, versus the 3070 overclocked. 
Ghost Recon Breakpoint is next then, and 1080p Ultra Wide, the 6800 is a mere 3% ahead of the 3070. And overclocking the 3070 actually means it's able to overtake the stock 6800. But uh, an overclock 6800 is 6% uh, ahead of the overclock 3070. At 4040p Ultra Wide, a 6800 is a single percent ahead of the 3070. In other words, they perform the same. Once overclocked, they both still perform very much the same here, and uh, it is slightly better frame times on the AMD card, but uh, uh, both at stock speeds and overclocked, but nothing major. Rainbow Six Siege is next, and at stock, the 6800 is 19% faster at 1080p ultra wide. With both cards overclocked, the 6800 is now still 19% faster. And uh, moving up to 1440p, the RX 6800 is now 11% ahead of the stock 3070. And overclocked, the 6800 is 13% ahead of the uh, 3070 overclocked. Witcher 3 is next, and here we see the same thing as last time. At 1080p ultra wide, we have a CPU bottleneck on the RX 6800, probably a driver thing, but uh, there's no such bottleneck on the 3070. Therefore, the 3070 is 9% ahead at stock, and it's 13% faster once they both are overclocked, because the RX 6800 doesn't gain much from the overclock due to the bottleneck. At 1440p ultra wide, things do change, and uh, now the 6800 is 11% faster uh, than the stock 3070. And uh, once they're both are overclocked, the 6800 is still in the lead, but now only by 10%. Now then, for relative performance, at 1080p ultra wide, the 6800 is on average 6% faster. Uh, if you overclock the 3070, it is in. If you do overclock the 3070, it is within 1% of a stock 6800. And overclock the 6800 is on average 7% faster than the overclock 3070. If you move up to 1440p ultra wide, there is not a big change in relative performance, but uh, at stock the 6800 is 5% faster than the 3070 on average. And overclocked the 3070 is about on par with the stock uh, 6800, and the overclocked 6800 is on average 6% faster than the overclocked 3070. So it's not a whole lot in it, it's a bit like the 2070 Super versus 5700 XT, except in this case the 3070 would be the 5700 XT, as it is cheaper and the performance is very close to the 6800. So let's take a look at value. If you were to find either of these cards at the MSRP, the 3070 is ever so slightly better value than the 6800, especially if we were to factor in ray tracing and the LSS, which I have covered in the original 6800 review and the 3070 review. At 1440p ultra wide, it represents even better value. The problem is, though, neither of these cards are available at the MSRP, so instead let's take a look at value represented by the cheapest card I can order in my country. Note that the cards are not in stock, but are available for back order. For the 3070, that is 720 USDs for the Asus Dual model. And for the 6800, that is the Power Color Fighter for an eye watering 900 USD. At these prices, the value proposition changes. So the 3070 is close to a full dollar less per average FPS at 1080p ultra wide, and more than a dollar less per average FPS at 1440p ultra wide. So at these prices, you do need to ask, ask yourself: Is twice the VRAM worth it? And in my opinion, not really. At not at these prices anyway. The prices I paid, which were 844 USD for the 6800 and 810 for the 3070. Uh, at those prices, the 6800 is better value. I really hope stock increases soon and that prices are coming down or back to normal or something because it's uh, very, it's it kind of sucks to pay 6800 XT money for a 6800. So, but yeah, I do hope stock inc uh, increases and prices are coming down because there are no cards at MSRP right now for either Nvidia or AMD. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much all I have for now. Thank you so much for watching. And if you want to pick up one of these GPUs. Good luck and happy hunting, but uh, for now, farewell.